Welcome to Landscape Photo Editing Sessions. I'm Raya Arkiri. In this episode, I'm going to show you my time-lapse editing workflow. So one of the most important things about editing time-lapses is having all your files organized. So the way I shoot time-lapses is using the built-in intervalometer in my camera and shooting raw files. So I shoot a series of raw files. So I usually shoot 240 shots between an interval of between 1 to 30 seconds and then I have all these raw files and I organize them by place and then date and then I put a folder for time lapses and then I number each time lapse and put a description so this makes it a lot easier to organize your files and uh, process them So I have this program called LR Time Lapse, and it's an easy way to create transitions between your your shots so that you can edit them. And you, I'll show you what I mean by that later on. And it also allows you to deflicker. So I'm gonna navigate to my time lapse I wanna edit, and then click on it, and it'll initialize all the data and load up all the metadata and analyze the brightness values. So this blue line represents the brightness values and the higher it is the brighter it is. So if I scroll through this you can see a big change right there and that's where I manually change the aperture. I open it up a bit more and then you also can see the natural light as the sun, the clouds pass um, under the sun. So right here is another big aperture change. And also over here. And a few more. So LR time lapse allows you to smooth out these brightness values so there's no flicker. And you can have a preview of the unprocessed files right now. So the first thing I want to do is go to the visual workflow tab and create keyframes using the keyframe wizard. So keyframes allow you to animate or add transitions to your edited files. So each of these keyframes represents a file that I'm going to edit in Lightroom. So by default, it'll create one keyframe, and uh, but two is the standard. So one in the beginning and one at the end. And you, I can also add more just by going into the frame and clicking to add keyframes. So in Lightroom, I can edit the first frame and then edit the last frame and then load it, reload it in here and it'll auto transition the values. So if I want it brighter in the beginning and then less bright uh, over here, it'll automatically transition all the photos so that it smoothly ramps from brighter to darker. So I'm going to apply, the keyframes are applied now and I'm going to save it. So this saves the metadata to files. And then in Lightroom, I have my time lapse already loaded up. But now I need to select them all the frames, go to metadata, and read metadata from files. So this will load up the keyframes that were just saved in LR time lapse. So now you can see this first frame has a four star filter, and this represents a keyframe. And the last one will also have a keyframe of the four star keyframe. And I'm going to go to filters and change my filter to LRT for keyframes. And then that'll only filter out the frames that are keyframed. So the first frame and last frame. So I'm going to go ahead and start processing my my picture or my file. 
So for this one, I think I'm going to take down the exposure so that I have more detail in the sky. And then I'm going to bring up the shadows and the blacks. I'm also going to increase the right, the whites, and that will give a bit more contrast. And then maybe just reducing the highlights just a little bit to get a bit more detail in the sky. And then I'm going to make it a bit warmer, the temperature, and then I'm all, I'd also have vibrance increased. I'm also going to sharpen it. So I usually over sharpen when I do time lapses because I'm going to be um, resizing it. So I also reduce a little bit of noise because that sharpening added a little bit more noise in this scene. I'm also going to add a little bit more radius to the sharpening. Make, I'm going to make sure the remove chromatic aberration is checked. Then I'm going to press the backslash uh, key on my keyboard to check the before and after and see if I like it. All right, so I think I like that. I'm going to press Control Shift C and then copy uh, the, all the settings and then paste it to my end frame. So Control Shift V. So for this one, I think I want the highlights a bit a bit brighter. And then I think I want to take down the the blacks and the shadows a bit. I'm also going to make the white balance a bit more more cooler, a cooler tint because it's blue hour. And that's pretty good. Also, one more thing, I'm going to reduce the clarity a bit. That'll that'll soften out the clouds a little bit cuz it's a little bit harsh, these dark clouds right here. So, minus 20 clarity. Alright, so there's also a, a bit of color noise in this one. So I'm going to increase the color, noise reduction, and also the smoothness. All right, so I'm finished editing them, and I'm going to select both of them and save the metadata to the files by pressing Control S, and that just saved it. So I'm going to open back LR time lapse and press reload. So as you can see, it loads up all of the values, all the things I changed and I'm going to press auto transition. So anything that's between here, it'll automatically transition smoothly between the values. So there's auto transition. And as you can see, if I go into the, um, the blacks, it starts out at 65 and then it smoothly goes down to 28. Same thing with shadows and white balance. So LR time lapse will make a smooth transition between the keyframes that you create. And then I'm going to save. So next thing I want to do is um, create visual previews. So LR time lapse will process the files with uh, the LR uh, with the Lightroom processing. So it'll process those as, and you can preview them. It's also going to calculate the values and I'm going to be able to deflicker. So this is going to take a while to process. All right, so it finished processing that preview and it's a nice transition between the white balance and blacks and stuff now, but now I have to fix that flicker. 
So I'm just going to press this visual deflicker button and I can adjust the smoothing so from 0 all the way to 50 which is basically a straight line. But I don't really want that and before that I'm actually going to recalculate the brightness values only for the sky since the clouds are passing by and it's making the a natural flicker on the rock. So I'm going to drag a rectangle along the sky and that will recalculate the brightness values only for the sky so that I can deflicker it based on the sky. So now it's it's a bit different now and I'm gonna I think I like it at around 20 so 20 is pretty smooth and that will do a good job maybe a bit more smoother actually yeah I think I actually like it at 45 so I'm gonna turn off the visual previews and apply it so that'll apply the uh, brightness values to that and adjust the exposures for each file I'm gonna save that and then open Lightroom back up turn off the filter full sequence select them all and then read metadata from files so that'll load up all the data and then next thing I'm gonna do is export it alright so control shift E to load up the export dialog and then I'm gonna export it to the folder as a JPEG so to the same name I'm gonna make a new folder and I usually do JPEG quality at 90 sRGB color space and then I resize it to 12 megapixels so I already exported the files and because it takes a while and then I'm gonna open up After Effects so I have my files already exported and I can import my files so I'm gonna press Control I to import and then I have the files already exported I'm gonna click on the first file and make sure JPEG sequence is checked and then press import so that'll import this as a time-lapse so I'm gonna press I'm gonna change uh, the frame rate so I just pressed alt control E to or alt I mean control alt G that's what I meant I'm gonna change the frame rate to 24 because that's standard for uh, film or for yeah I'm going to drag my um, file into a new composition and then I usually do warp stabilizer for to fix camera shake and any other weird movements so apply the warp stabilizer VFX it's going to analyze it going to stabilize the frame so there's no camera shake and then I'm going to render and export it after that Alright, so it's done stabilizing and it's a little bit of a change. So I think it's pretty good now. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is change the composition settings. Um, so I'm going to name it to the name I had. I'm also going to change it the resolution to uh, UHD 4K. So it will be 3840 by 2160. To uncheck that lock aspect ratio. So 2160. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this to the full scale and I actually want to add a little bit of an animation going from 
Um, so going from here to then here at the end. So I'm going to start here and then I'm going to add a keyframe to my position. So I'm going to add a keyframe right there, go to the end, and then change the position. And then that'll just an animate it over time. All right, so next thing I can do is finally render it, render the final video. So I'm going to press Control M to add it to my render queue, and then I usually do quick time, and then I use quality 100. So this will give me a good good quality video I can edit in Premiere and uh, put together videos. So the resolution is ready good. I'm going to turn off audio output, press OK, then change my output, and render. Alright, so my time-lapse editing workflow, I so just to overview, load it up in LR time-lapse, initialize it, add keyframes to the first frame and the last frame and then save open it up in Lightroom and then uh, reload the files edit the keyframed files with the processing in Lightroom save it to the metadata reload in LR timelapse create the auto transitions between the keyframes save it, turn on visual previews to preview the time-lapse and also calculate the brightness values based on the editing I did in Lightroom. Um, use the visual deflicker to create a smooth uh, brightness values so there's no flicker. Save it and then reload it into Lightroom. Export the files as JPEGs import in After Effects, add warp stabilizer and maybe add a zooming animation or a sliding animation and then render. So next thing I would do after that is edit in Premiere but that's for another video. So thanks for watching and I hope that was useful to you and if you found that useful comment, subscribe and share the video with your friends.